Okay, right now um, we're st I'm standing inside of a, what's called an RF reverberation chamber. Uh, some of the videos that we've done in the past have been in a RF anechoic chamber, and maybe Kayla can put up an example uh, of uh, some of the stuff we've done at Nemco. The idea behind those chambers is you want all, all RF that's being emitted from a transmitter to be uh, absorbed. You don't want any reflections whatsoever. So what's happening essentially, I'm just going to lean forward and grab, let's say we're looking at the Safe and Sound Pro 2 meter. Let's say we want to do some measuring. You've got the transmitter antenna here and what you're doing is shining RF or directing RF and you're illuminating um, this, this device with a known uh, field intensity and you are eliminating reflections from walls because reflections cause peaks and valleys, uh, highs and lows for RF measurement and you don't want that. So that's called a re an anechoic chamber. They're very expensive to make and build. Uh, they need to be fairly large for lower frequencies. Um, and so the, the other option for testing is what's called a reverberation chamber where you're doing the exact opposite. So in this case, we are essentially inside a Faraday cage. The walls, the ceiling, everything is completely reflective. And uh, normally, um, for when you just want a quiet environment like a Faraday cage, that's all that you need so that any device that you turn on in here is going to be at zero. There's going to be zero RF getting into here. But if we introduce a transmitter, depending on the position, while well, the reflections are gonna, you're gonna come from everywhere, and they'll be constant if the meter is in the, it stays in this position and if your transmitter stays in this position. Well, you'll get inaccurate readings depending on where you are, which reflections are crossing each other. But if you have what's called RF stirs here, um, what these are doing is constantly rotating and they're stirring, literally stirring the RF so that in a in one revolution from the RF stirs, you've got a field intensity from RF that goes to its maximum and to its minimum. So at, at any, every second, in any point in space in this reverberation chamber, the meter is going to see a maximum value regardless of this position, polarization it's called, and, and so uh, we're investigating this for, for uh, one option for testing because this, uh, in my mind, simulates uh, reality for uh, what you're experiencing when you're in an in a RF environment because as you're moving through the RF environment and walking, your body is always entering and going into different RF hotspots and zones, many frequencies uh, uh, over interacting with each other. And so the reverberation chamber uh, I think does a really good job of simulating reality. And so uh, this particular space is, uh, is, is fairly small. Um, you know, it's under, uh, it's about eight, eight feet by eight feet, um, but it, it allows um, some very useful, uh, useful testing. Uh, so in, in addition to the being a benefit for having a Faraday cage, but we can also generate very consistent RF fields while these RF stirs are going. So. Um, We'll see if we can get some more information about this in details on this, on this uh, chamber for you in the future.